What a tool. Also, can you smell toast? Because there's obviously shit wrong with his brain. Latest headline. Macron says Putin willing to consider halting attacks on civilians. How generous of him to consider maybe not committing war crimes. Thanks for the assist there, France. Probably not going to be a lot of jokes in this one, just FYI. As glib as I am about all the terrible things that happen that I try and skewer, and as much as I pedal my tiny channel off the back of whichever terrible thing happened next, glib is my poor taste defense mechanism. And as much as there is no way to be authentic while pursuing media whoredom, like by making this video, this situation does not make me happy, of course. It makes me sad and scared, and it's not happening to me, it's not my story. So let's start with Putin's rambling, paranoid state of mind and how far he's willing to go. With all the NATO build-up in neighbouring countries like Poland and Lithuania, why haven't we imposed a no-fly zone or gone into Ukraine? Here's a quote from Angus Roxburgh, former BBC Moscow correspondent, consultant to the Kremlin, writing in The Guardian. Putin had this to say, Russia will respond immediately, and the consequences will be such as you have never seen in your entire history. All the necessary decisions in this regard have been taken. Roxburg concludes, There can be little doubt that what he means is that he is prepared to deploy nuclear weapons against any country that takes military action to help Ukraine. Putin added with great emphasis, I hope that my words will be heard. Since that was published, Putin has responded to the exclusion of selected Russian banks from the international SWIFT system by putting his nuclear deterrent on alert. And no one is entirely sure what that means. But let's be very clear about this. Waving your nuclear dick around in public is never a defensive act. That's a threat. That's an I'm going to kick the dog in front of you so that you know that you're next. And it gets worse. As UK Defence Minister Ben Wallace told Sky News, Putin won't stop at Ukraine as he doesn't believe the Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania are countries. But they are NATO members. So is NATO prepared to go to war with Russia? A war that may go nuclear? You'd better hope that NATO does have the balls to nuke Moscow to protect Latvia, if it comes to it, because if not, their nuclear deterrent is no longer a deterrent. It's carte blanche to every other crackpot nuclear power like North Korea that they can do whatever the fuck they want. So I'm very glad I don't have to make that call. That's where we're at. We can't go into Ukraine, and as brave, perceptive young Ukrainian Ksenia pointed out to BBC's Nick Robinson in a metro station bomb shelter, the West is dependent on Ukraine and Zelensky to shield us from a war across Europe and possibly the world that could turn nuclear, because Putin, who went on TV and asked the Ukrainian military to overthrow their Nazi leaders, has obviously lost his goddamn mind like Daenerys riding a dragon over King's Landing. And Zelensky is not an evil queen. He's the Jewishest Nazi leader the world has never seen, which goes to show you how batshit fucking crazy Putin is. Zelensky is, however, brave as fuck, and smart enough to be out on the streets of Kiev, waging a defiant media war through his phone. While knowing that if he's captured, if his family is captured, if anyone shielding them is captured, they will be tortured into some weird nonsensical confession and then executed. And newsflash, all this navel-gazing about what Putin's thinking and whether Putin objects to NATO expansion or to the example of Ukraine's nascent democracy is bollocks. It's not that complicated and it doesn't change the outcome so it doesn't fucking matter. Stop trying to rationalise the cray-cray. He's not afraid of anything, 
and he obviously doesn't give a damn about his people or any people. He just wants it back. He wants everything the Soviet Union lost back. That's it. Whether it's the bullshit mystical Pashernanost myth, or the West excluding Russia, which fair point, or because shock horror, he suffered the indignity of having to drive a cab in the early 90s instead of torturing East German cab drivers in a Stasi basement. It's all layers of bollocks. He just wants it all back, and he wants to be the boss of it. And it's on us for letting him get away with it since he nicked half of Georgia. That's all it is, and that's why he isn't going to stop until something stops him. The West isn't going to stop Putin with military action. NATO won't directly defend Ukraine at the risk of nuclear war. If NATO has to stop Putin on NATO soil, it's already too late. After all, if Putin's prepared to use nukes on NATO on Ukrainian soil, what's to stop him using them on NATO soil? If NATO blinks, China will take the opportunity to move in on Taiwan, the Republic of China, and then America is legally obliged to fight a possible nuclear war in two theatres. Sound familiar? This is why the West will arm Ukraine to the teeth, and this is how Ukraine is all that's standing between us and a brief but extremely luminous World War III. Sunglasses at the ready, then. So let's talk about the sanctions where even though Germany pushed pause on the uncertified, empty Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which changes nothing for nobody, Europe is still sucking Putin's sweet, sweet hydrocarbons out of Nord Stream 1 and all of his other holes, to the tune of half a billion dollars a day. Thanks for teaching everyone involved that trick, BP. Yeah, you better believe they divested before anyone pulled too hard on that particular thread. The first one's always free and all that. So while the West is slowly banning select Russian banks from SWIFT, once everyone's favourite billionaire donor chums have signalled they've stashed their wad in London, Panama, that genocidist's old favourite Geneva, or my personal holiday hideout recommendation the Bahamas, Russia won't be blanket banned from SWIFT until America, motivated by the carrot of a Russo-European divorce and the stick that is a light smattering of nuclear war, has negotiated rerouting liquid natural gas supplies from Qatar and Libya that are currently earmarked for Asia. And Putin won't shut off the gas to Europe because then no one will trust his supply. In the meantime, Europe is bankrolling Putin's little experiment in price gouging by the way of holding an entire continent hostage to the threat of nuclear fucking war. Cutting off SWIFT is making it harder for Russia to utilise its $640 billion forex and gold reserve, but equally, China would just love to own a SWIFT alternative, and may just have shortfalls of Qatar gas to make up on. And how much China will back Putin depends largely on how much of a pariah we can make him and how quickly. So this is it. It's a race. Can Putin solidify his position in Ukraine and establish a deadlock, faster than the West can disentangle itself from Russian gas and make trading with him taboo. And it's looking like a no he can't, because the Ukrainian people are fucking tenacious, and Putin severely underestimated what it would take to subdue the country in a weekend. As I shoot this, there are peace talks going on right now, and you can bet that Putin's going to demand to keep everything he's taken so far, whilst Belarus mobilises in the background. And I shouldn't say this because people are going to die, but I sincerely hope that Zelensky respectfully tells him to get fucked. So what will stop Putin? The very best we can hope for is riots across Russia and a swift and decisive regime change to the back of the head. But like all dictators, he obviously doesn't give a damn about his people, and the cringy, embarrassing staged meeting of his so-called Security Council tells us no one is going to stand up to him when all it would take is the PM, the spymaster, and a couple of generals to reveal the emperor's got no nuts under his new clothes. Does anyone in Moscow have any balls left, though? Alas, no. But wait. Didn't we have someone for regime change? They used to be unscrupulous, bloody, criminal, but medium good at it. Where is the CIA when you need them? Oh yeah. Illegally spying on American citizens on American soil. Again. Like that's news. Like anyone managed to roll an eye over that bombshell. 
Spying on stoners and union organisers must be easier than doing their actual jobs. What the fuck is the CIA even for anymore? Where the fuck have they been? So the next best thing is a long and bloody Syria-type proxy war east of the Dnieper between a Ukrainian civil resistance with nowhere to go and nothing to lose and a frozen Russian army with a fleet of crematoria trucks and a mad king with deep pockets. And that all-too-familiar nightmare is NATO's best hope for avoiding World War III. So who wins in all this? Well, Big Oil are profiting from the price spike whilst also lobbying for more domestic drilling, because the solution to climate change is more oil, like the solution to a coke problem is moving on to crack, obviously. Next in line are politicians, as desk heroes from Australia's charmer Scott Morrison to the GOP figure out how they can spin fear and authoritarianism into votes with a smorgasbord of delightful catchphrases from the classics like we need to protect our borders from starving brown people to new hits like hey, let's suck Putin's cock in public some more which I don't understand but seems to be working for the GOP in the upside down because, like I say don't try and rationalise the crazy, and because the white folks always hide behind the big authoritarian daddy with all the answers when the bogeyman comes to take their God-stolen comforts away. And with a global crisis unfolding, who even remembers VIP lanes or party gate? Boris Bot 2000 ain't smart enough to walk and talk at the same time, but somewhere in Whitehall some Malcolm Tuckerite sociopath is mashing the Boris remote and screaming, Oh my fucking Christ, yes. Oh thank you God. Thank you sweet Jesus. And honestly, I don't even care right now because at least a professional is holding the remote. And who benefits the most? Well, it's definitely not China, is it? Who've been at pains to proclaim that their own special relationship, you know, the kind where Britain thinks they're mates and America thinks it's all a bit fatal attraction, are suddenly awkward and strained exclaiming they were had, that their post-Olympic statement of mutual cooperation was made on the understanding that Putin promised not to invade. Which I could almost believe, because Putin is fucking nuts enough to try and con China. But they're still failing to condemn an invasion of a sovereign nation, and thereby undermining 70 years of their own foreign policy, and raising questions on their future intentions in the South Pacific. It's no coincidence that Biden is sending a defence delegation to Taiwan right now. China did, however, tell their citizens in Ukraine to display the Chinese flag on their car so the Russians knew who not to shoot at. That was when things were looking good for Putin. After Xi Jinping forever had a bit of a chat with the emperor on Friday afternoon and realised how batshit fucking crazy the Russian naturist is, he reversed that advice stating the situation in East Ukraine has undergone rapid changes, with the Chinese embassy telling its citizens to remain on friendly terms with the Ukrainians and not to display any identifying signs. I.e., this wasn't as quick and clean as Putin had promised, and all bets are off. In fact, it's turned into a bit of a PR nightmare, so enjoy holding that flaming bag of dog shit, G. Boy what I would have done to be a fly on the wall for that conversation, and for all their other little chats. After all, Putin was first guest lined up to get chummy with Jinping at the Winter Climate Stomping and Dictator Conference. I can see it now, backstage at the green room, after the handshake in front of the Steppenwell for the Paps, some Chinese tea, some North Korean tea, some very pert lap dancers, female ones even. A bit too much of Colombia's finest. Cane sugar is definitely what I mean, of course, because cane sugar is well known to induce Putin levels of paranoia. And Jinping picks his moment of inception. You do yours, and I won't block you at the UN or close trade, and then I'll do mine, and between us we'll have two-thirds of the globe and America on its knees, doing and sucking whatever the fuck they're told. At which point Putin nods and gets on his knees, because there were some very gooey statements coming out of that green room after. So you can bet good old G has his feet up by the telly, beer cracked, taking notes. Pull your money out first. 
Check. Be prepared to go nuclear. Check. Do I have enough tanks to land on the Republic of China? Check. Do I have enough tanks to run over my own protesters? Oh, absolutely, yes.